Marveling at the complex design of the brain, another scientist stated that the neural code is often likened in a machine code that underpins the operating system of a digital computer. But the brain's complexity dwarfs that of any existing computer. A typical brain contains 100 billion cells, almost as numerous as the stars in the Milky Way, and each cell is linked to as many as 100,000 others. Almost a thousand times more than the best supercomputers. <coughs> That's how powerful our brain is. Granted, we don't really use it <laughs> that well. But the scientists being modest, the brain contains more electrical connections than all the computers, phone systems, and electrical appliances in the world. Carl Sagan wrote, if written out in English, that information would fill 20 million volumes, as many as in the world's largest libraries. The equivalent of 20 million books is inside the heads of every one of us, waiting to be filled. The brain is a very big place in a very small space. But beyond the facets of the brain, we have to cope with uh, the mystery of consciousness. Do you suppose that if we ever got to the point where we could replicate the capacities of the brain and create a human-like robot, that robot would start telling us how much it loves us, how it's depressed, or how its spiritual life is? Not in a million years. There's something unique about a person that makes them a person. It's that inner self, the consciousness, with emotions and self-awareness. If the evolutionary process is correct, there's nothing more to an individual than the particles of which he's composed. And yet, if you want to get to know me, you wouldn't slice my brain into little pieces and analyze its contents. You'd just ask me about me. You can't point to any one part of my body and say, there's BJ. That's because there's something over and above the atoms in our body that makes us self-aware thinking creatures. That something is called the spirit and has memorized, mesmerized scientists for as long as there have been scientists. And when we step, take a step further beyond the human scope and we look at interactions between species within ecosystems, we see an even bigger portrait of life. And when we go back further, we see that all the tiny building blocks of the universe work together to form one grand artistic tapestry. Perhaps what's most shocking about the universe at this level is a precise blend of natural laws. What we're gradually discovering is that all the constants and laws of physics and chemistry were plugged into the universe the moment it popped into existence. And that mysteriously, many of them are fine-tuned to allow for life on our little planet. When you look at the early picoseconds of the universe, and a picosecond is the amount of time it takes for light to travel the width of the strand of the human hair you find that the expansion rate of the space is so precise that if you adjusted it and made it larger to one part in 10 to the 53rd power, <coughs> matter would have repelled and stars never would have formed. If you adjust it one part smaller, then all the matter in the universe would have collapsed on itself. That fine tuning is so, pre so precise, it would be like traveling hundreds of miles into the atmosphere Throwing a dart at Earth and hitting a bullseye measuring one trillionth of a trillionth of an inch in diameter, which is smaller than an atom. At Earth's level, the coincidence is multiplied. The oxygen level on Earth is around 21%. If it were 15%, human would, humans would suffocate. If it were 25%, fires would erupt spontaneously. The Earth is actually tilted on its axis 23.5 degrees. If you mess with that tilt a few degrees in either direction, the climate's become so extreme that intelligent life is impossible. And in case you think we're being living on a lucky planet in a lucky universe, think again. We barely scratched the surface. An astronomer named Hugh Ross has collected several hundred more of these constants. <clears throat> I ask you again, when's the last time you have observed an explosion which produced order? Fred Hoyle said, a common sense interpretation of the facts suggests that a super intellect has monkeyed with physics as well as chemistry and biology, and that there are no blind forces worth speaking of in nature. Shortly thereafter, Hoyle was also quoted as saying, Nar. I mean, look at that guy. <laughs> but I think Hoyle is right. There's not only order and structure to the universe, but beauty and harmony as well. As we move out and out and we gaze at the night sky and the entirety of the created universe, we see that complexity on the small scale translates to beauty and unity on the large scale. And I have one more video for you guys.